The sermonette today is called Gaining Help and Strength from Others. We have many different types of people in the church. Some are introvert, some are extrovert, some very communicative, others quiet, some are good listeners, and others want to do all the talking. I'm not looking anywhere in particular. Some may concentrate on their own woes, others may be encouragers. Those who will help and encourage others going through difficult times, helping those with their current woes and concerns. The church has a whole variety of members, of people, with different backgrounds, different situations, ages, nationalities, and many other different experiences. From this wealth of knowledge and experience, we can gain help and strength from each other. Those who have gone through the same sort of trials that we may be going through. On the other hand, we might be the ones who are helping others. If you'll turn to Hebrews 10 verse 25, and let us read some of the reasons why we are in church today. Hebrews 10 verse 25. Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who promised is faithful. And let us consider one another in order to stir up love and good works, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together, as is the manner of some, but exhorting one another, and so much more as you see the day approaching. We are attending services here today first and foremost because we are commanded to. But further, we read in these verses that it goes beyond that. We are to stir up love and good works and to help encourage and to exhort one another. It's not just a case of turning up at the last moment before services start and then heading straight off immediately after services finish. By fellowshipping and having concern for others, we can support and assist those that need such help. Yes, very often there is someone who has not had a good week and someone to talk to is all that they may need to help them feel better. We each have different kinds of strengths. Some are able to persevere against hopeless odds. Some are able to see light in a very dark world. Some are able to give selflessly with no thought of return, while others are able to bring a sense of perspective into the hearts and minds of those around them. Those who have such gifts, and there are many in the church who have much, so much to give, can be of great help and strength to others. The Greek word for exhort is para-alcaho. I'm not going to try and repeat that, which means to call, near, beseech, be of good comfort, and to entreat. All of these things we can do if we are available and that means that we do need to attend church. This means, of course, that we have a congregation within reach each week. And that is not always possible today, unfortunately, with many scattered brethren. It's a sad fact that for many, those who don't have the opportunity, when they do, should make the most of it, health and mobility permitting. We read in Ecclesiastes 4, if you'll turn there, Ecclesiastes 4, verses 9 to 12. This is about the value of a friend through whom we can gain help and strength. Ecclesiastes 4, starting in verse 9. It says, Two are better than one, because they have a good reward for their labour. For if they fall, one will lift up his companion, but woe to him who is alone when he falls, for he has no one to help him up. Again, 
If two lie down together, they will keep warm. But how can one be warm alone? Though one may be empowered by another, two can withstand him, and a threefold cord is not easily broken. In John Gill's exposition of the Bible, they say the following. A threefold cord is not quickly broken or in haste, as two are better than one. So three or more united together is the better still. They are able to make head against an enemy and to conquer him. If a family, community, city or kingdom are divided against themselves, they cannot stand. But if united in all probability, nothing can hurt them. Satan will try and pick off individuals on their own. It is easier for him to do so, but when we have fellowship with brethren, these friendships can grow and we can gain help and strength from others. And this can really help us in our fight, this fight that we have against the evil spiritual world that constantly attacks us. Please turn to Exodus 4, verses 10 to 17. In the first part of this chapter, we read that Moses questioned God about his suitability to lead the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt. He didn't have the confidence to undertake such a job at first and came up with different excuses. Exodus 4, verse 10. Then Moses said to the Lord, O my Lord, I am not eloquent, neither before nor since you have spoken to your servant, but I am slow of speech and slow of tongue. So the Lord said to him, Who has made man's mouth, or who makes the mute, the deaf, the seeing, or the blind, have not I the Lord? Now therefore go, and I will be with your mouth, and teach you what to say. But he said, O my Lord, please send by the hand of whomever whomever else you may send. So the anger of the Lord was kindled against Moses, and he said, Is not Aaron the Levite your brother? I know that he can speak well. And look, he is also coming out to meet you. When he sees you, he will be glad in his heart. Verse 15. Now you shall speak to him and put the words in his mouth, and I will be with your mouth and with his mouth, and I will teach you what you shall do. So he shall be your spokesman to the people, and he himself shall be as a mouth to you, and you shall be to him as God. And you shall take this rod in your hand, with which you shall do the signs. And so God said that his brother Aaron could help, and as we read in the following chapters, he was a great help to Moses for many years. I'm sure that they both gained help and strength from each other as God performed many miracles in getting the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt and released into the wilderness. I'm sure that they took great comfort from each other. Let us look at another outstanding example where some were of very great assistant to someone who was paralyzed. If you'll turn to Mark 2, verses 1 to 9, where we see friends and probably people of faith carrying a paralyzed person. This must have been somewhat of a shock to all those, great number, who were there at the time. This person needed help and strength from others to actually get near to Jesus. So let's read Mark 2 verse 1. And again he entered the Capernaum after some days, and it was heard that he was in the house. Immediately many people gathered so that there was no longer room to receive them, not even near the door, and he preached the word to them. Then they came to him, bringing a paralytic who was carried by four men. And when they could not come near him because of the crowd, they uncovered the roof where he was. So when they had broken through, they let down the bed on which the paralytic was lying. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, Son, your sins are forgiven you. And some of the scribes were sitting there and reasoning to their hearts, Why does this man speak blasphemies like this? Who can forgive sins but God alone? 
But immediately when Jesus perceived in his spirit that they reasoned thus within themselves, he said to them, Why do you reason about these things in your hearts? Which is easier to say to the paralytic, Your sins are forgiven you, or to say, Arise, take up your bed and walk but that you may know that the Son of Man has power on earth to forgive sins, he said to the paralytic, I say to you, arise, take up your bed and go to your house. Immediately he arose, took up the bed, went out of the, in the presence of them all, so that all were amazed and glorified God, saying, we never saw anything like this. Now the paralytic here didn't allow his personal situation to become an obstacle to his situation, which on the face of it might have seemed impossible. He gained help and strength from others in order to get himself in front of Jesus. And his sins were forgiven and his, his uh, problem of paralysis was healed. The house was filled to overflowing, but with some creative thinking, or as they say today, thinking outside the box, They worked it out. Coming down through the roof worked. How else could they have got near Jesus without doing what they did with all that crowd about? It was a well-worked plan that paid handsome dividends, but it couldn't have worked without help and probably strength from a number of other people. In Acts 2, verse 40 to 47, if you'll turn there, we read where the early New Testament church started to grow right from that day of Pentecost when the Holy Spirit was given. Acts 2 verse 40. And with many other words he testified and exhorted them, saying, Be saved from this perverse generation. Then those who gladly received his word were baptized, and that day about 3,000 souls were added. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship, in the breaking of bread and in prayers. Then fear came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were done through the apostles. Now all who believed were together, and had all things in common, and sold their possessions and goods, and divided them among all as anyone had need. So continuing daily with one accord in the temple, and breaking bread from house to house, they ate their food with gladness and simplicity of heart, praising God and having favour with all the people. And the Lord added to the church daily those who were being saved. This was a show of real solidarity, and the early members of the New Testament church certainly seemed to gain help and strength from each other. Those who weren't there would have missed out, but those who had been waiting together for the promise of the Holy Spirit would have, would have been helped and strengthened by each other and themselves at that time as they waited. And that is the way that we should respond and interact today. One writer said, Take care to find your own true strength. Nurture it. Develop it. Share it with those around you. Let it become a light for those who are living in darkness. Remember, strength is based in force, and is, is a strength people fear. Strength based in love is a strength people crave. And strength combined with giving is even greater. I've noticed that those who choose to remain on their own, not because they are far away from a local congregation, but see themselves as independent Christians are often those who come up with weird ideas and prognostications. That is neither an example to follow, nor is it good for the individuals concerned. They can become experts in their own eyes, not understanding that God has a ministry which has a responsibility to help, to feed, to nourish, and to counsel the brethren. But such act action is not confined just to the ministry. We should gain help and strength from others, and just as importantly, we should give help and strength to others, wherever possible. 
That way we will all be headed in the right direction, right on towards the Kingdom of God.